coming up on iPads in the Classroom back channel to improve student engagement. Hi, my name is Guy Trainin. And my name is Ashley Roki. And this is iPads in the Classroom from TechEdge and today we're talking about using back channel to improve student engagement and we will start with a few apps and websites that help you do this but first I'd like to talk about why and what are we talking about when we talk about the back channel. A back channel is a way to really use the fact that kids with devices are on the network and they can talk to each other not just in person but mm -hmm. actually they can talk to each other and to the teacher in a digital way a few advantages, first of all, it keeps the noise level down. It means that you can have multiple conversations at one time. And as a teacher, that helps you because I actually get a record of what students are saying. So you can save a record, you can see what they're saying. Other advantages really have to do with the fact that some students feel very comfortable speaking in front of everybody or in small groups. Other are a lot more shy or they have a language barrier or other things. So. A back channel allows them to have this conversation without uh, having to speak up in class mm -hmm. and it allows them to think about the responses and interact. A few ways you can use a back channel is a way for students to keep asking questions as you're teaching or lecturing about something. It's a way to have a conversation or make comments and notes when students are watching a movie, for example. And it's also a way to have students work together in groups or even as a large group in a discussion that takes on a different format and allows students to really think more deeply and participate. And what we love about some of these apps that we're going to talk about in a second is that you can make it private. So there are some places where you make a discussion like that, a back channel that's very public and that happens on Twitter for mm -hmm. example, but when we're using some of the apps it allows you to create a closed one that only your students have access to and you close it when it's done so nobody can then come in and do anything to it. So let's start. Okay, the first website that I have is todaysme.com mm -hmm. um, and when you go to this website as a teacher you're going to want to sign up for an account because that's the that's the only way you're going to be able to create multiple rooms and share the URLs with your students. And what's important to know is it's a free account. It is so free. So you don't have to worry about how much it costs and it will work across platforms mm -hmm. because it works in your browser. Yes. Okay. So I created a room mm -hmm. called Tech Edge. So we'll go to that room there. Okay. And I went to the same room. So there's a web address that you can find. And so now we're inside that... Uh, um, back channel. Right. And as you can see, it's very simple, so there's not distraction for students. Um, but I want to show you the how you get the URL. Mm -hmm. So you're going to click down here on Room Tools. Yeah. And right here will be the URL that you need to share with your students in order for them to access that, because you just typed that in and it mm -hmm. took you straight. And what I love about this is it also, you can copy that, but there's also a, a QR code that you can generate mm -hmm. that then students can scan with their devices. And there's the ability to communicate that way. So you can send the link or you can just post the QR code and yep. go from there. Um, and so when you get here, you're going to select a nickname. So you're going to have students mm -hmm. put in their name. Um, and I'll put in mine here and click join. And then it just automatically gives you mm -hmm the opportunity to write your message. So I'm going to write a message to okay. the students. And I logged in as well. So you've got a message and I say I can log in and I have the same exact. So what I love about this, it's really simple mm -hmm. when you look at the screen and all you do is you write something. So, uh, so I write a message and I just click on say and it'll show up and everybody else can see this. Exactly. Right? Um, an important thing to point out is that mm -hmm. the limit is 140 characters, so similar to Twitter. So it's very just for short. Exactly. So really simple. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, what do you get as a teacher when you're done? So what access do you have? So you can determine who can go in, whether it's signed in users that are recognized, mm -hmm. people at my school, if you've got a school license, or just anyone. Remember, anyone doesn't mean that people will free float into it because mm -hmm. they've got to have an address to get in. So you can 
do uh, that and be uh, safe with today's meet, but you have to consider uh, how you want to manage it. If you've got an ongoing thing, you might consider opening a long-term chat, mm -hmm. but that increases the chance that people might get in that shouldn't be in. Mm -hmm. If you open it on a day-by-day -day basis, you really have the option. Yeah, and to you do see that. you have several mm -hmm. options here as to how long you want your particular room open. Yeah. So when you go into one of these chats, there's a way to actually get a transcript of everything that has been said in that uh, room and that transcript will let you save everything students do have done so even though you close the room and you're not using it anymore you've got record if you're interested in what students were thinking about what questions are left over and things like that that's the best way to do that so that's today's meet and now we're going to go to the next one and that is chassis, chassis. and that's with a z Yes. All right. So. And this is also a website, so chatsy.com. Mm -hmm. And um, you can see on the side here, when you come to the homepage, it says start a quick chat, which would probably be a good option if you were yep. doing something quickly. Um, so let's do. So you just fill put in, in a this. name, title, invite and email. By email. So you can plug my email and send me an invite. So now I can look at my email. Click on the link and go from there, right? Yep. Okay, so we get a message, room was created, chats are there. I can log into my email and find out the link, right? Yes. Okay, and then what? Okay, and it's just simple. This mm -hmm. is simple once again, so you're just going to type your message here and it'll ask you to create a name, so yeah. it has my name by it. Um, and we'll just type a message. And then again, everybody can see it. Yep. And you can open as many as you want. You can use symbols. So this is, again, very similar. Just another option. You can take one or the other. Just test them out mm -hmm. and see what it is. Uh, you can set preferences and you can have some room actions. Let's look at what the room actions might be. So because it is your room, you can do certain things. So for example, you can pose a question, right? And you can do pose a question and have public answers. Everybody sees them and private answers. So you can actually yep. use this as a way to get ongoing feedback that is individualized so students are not sharing the results. And one of the things to remember, you can post, you can project the back channel. Yep, on the screen. On the screen, if you have a TV or if you have a projector, but you want to check very carefully if you want to have that shared publicly because one of the advantages of the back channel is that it's not the focus. It's a way to have a second conversation in the classroom. So many times it's actually better if it's not mm -hmm. shared with everybody, especially if we're keeping things private and we don't want to share everything. Uh, you do that. A second way to do it is if you have a second projector uh, and then students uh, or participants of any kind can really see some of the side conversation while there's a main conversation going on. So you want to really consider. Yeah. Uh, and remember, students have, students, participants have actually access to what's going on in, in real time. So if they have devices, they're there. They don't necessarily need a projection at that point. Mm -hmm. uh, again, for me, that's one of the things that make it more attractive and not yes. less. And you can also save mm -hmm. your chats on this as well. So. You okay. can access them at a later So time. let's talk about more. So um, you said that one of the ways you could do this is on Padlet. So how can you yeah. do this on Padlet? Um, I've actually used this before in mm -hmm. a college classroom. So I'll pull up uh, one that... My college classroom. Yes, yours. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I was a student in this case, and I thought it worked really well. Mm -hmm. So you can see here there was a topic, and we were talking about this in class. Mm -hmm. But we were also, in small groups, posting to the Padlet yeah. wall. So you double tap and you'll get a mm -hmm. um, little notepad and you just simply write. And then everybody can see and it. And then everybody can see it. And then in this case it was projected mm -hmm. on the board. But it doesn't have but to be. But it doesn't be. have to be. Or you can project at the end after the discussion it is done. Yeah. What I do love about Padlet that adds from the other back channels is that you can actually include links and pictures. Yes that you can't really do in, mm -hmm. in Chatsy or in uh, today's meet. So th that provides you with a different way to communicate, which I really 
do like. So this is Padlet. We've talked about Padlet before. So if you want the details about Padlet, check out our Padlet uh, podcast uh, a few weeks ago. And the last one is Twitter. We've talked about Twitter a number of times. I love Twitter personally. Um, in Twitter, anybody can log in. The way you recognize things is usually using a, using a hashtag so people know how to find you. Uh, otherwise, they have, there's following so people can follow you mm -hmm. and they hear everything you say or write, really. Again, 140 characters, just like today's meet. And you can include video and, and uh, pictures. Yes. Definitely an advantage. The disadvantage with Twitter is that it's open. Mm -hmm. So anybody can see it. There's nothing closed about it. You can't protect students. If you've got students younger than 14, you don't really want them on Twitter yeah. uh, because there are minimum age requirements and you want to make sure that parents uh, are okay with their kids being on social media. So Twitter is fantastic for professionals. Twitter is great for adolescents if there is permission. But if there isn't, if, if there are problems, all of the other ones would work just as well, mm -hmm. but will uh, be private and therefore protected. Right? OK. So today we talked about back channel and the idea is to increase student engagement to all students, especially students who are a little bit shy and uh, are really concerned about uh, voicing things in their classroom. Mm -hmm. It's also the ability to open kind of a second conversation that can keep asking the questions and can keep really everybody engaged and being able to respond. As an instructor, I love this because there's another way for me to get an understanding of how students uh, really know what's going on mm -hmm. and are participating. And you can also ways. have, the teacher can have access to mm -hmm. that and refer back to it. And yeah. So, yeah. so uh, this is today's show and we'll see you next time on iPads in the Classroom.